Welcome geniuses, I'm Genie, your best buddy for A-Levels. In this channel, we'll bring you to explore the secret formula behind success. Hi, this video is about calculation of relative atomic mass. Before we move into the calculation, we will go into the definition of it. Next then, we will go into the mole, for its definition and also related to Avogadro constant. Relative atomic mass actually is the average mass of an atom compared to the mass of one twelfth of the mass of carbon twelfth. So we are using carbon twelfth as the reference element. So the words average is very important. So relative atomic mass actually is the average mass of the atom. So the first sentence gives us one to two marks in paper two. So if it is a three marks question, the last sentence is important where one atom of carbon 12 has a mass of 12. So it is the same goes to relative molecular mass. So it is also the average mass of one molecule compared to one twelfth of the mass of carbon 12. So we have also relative isotopic mass. So it is also the same where it is the average mass of one isotope compared to one twelfth of the mass of carbon twelve. So we could actually make use of this formula in calculating relative atomic mass. So where it is actually same as where we get average in mathematics. So we need to have the sum of the mass of isotopes multiply the percentage abundance of it over the total abundance. So where normally the total percentage abundance is equal to 100. Let's move into example of questions. In the question, the molar mass of isotopes of magnesium is given together with the percentage abundance of them. We could calculate the relative molecular mass of magnesium, making use of the molar mass of the isotopes, multiply the percentage abundance of them, and we have 26 times 11.3, we sum them up, then over the total percentage abundance where it is actually equals to 100. So with this calculation, we will get 24.3. And this is the relative atomic mass of magnesium. Besides percentage abundance, we could also be given with relative ratio of isotopes for example, here in this question where the relative ratio of isotopes of chlorine is given. So it is actually the same way in getting the relative abundance. And from it, we can make use of it to get the relative atomic mass of chlorine. So where the molar mass of 35 chlorine is 35 here, times the relative ratio of it, which is 3. So then we have 37 chlorine. The relative ratio of it is 1. So then here, next, it's over the total relative abundance. So where it is 3 plus 1 equals to 4. So with this calculation, we will get 35.5 as the relative atomic mass of chlorine.
Let's move into another type of question, where in this case, in the question, the relative atomic mass of gallium is given, and we are required to find the percentage abundance of each isotopes, and here we have 65 gallium and 71 gallium. So, the unknown is the relative abundance of 65 69 gallium and 71 gallium. So we could actually make these two unknown into one because it is hard to move into the calculation with two unknown in the equation. So it's supposed to be this way where we have 69 times x plus 71 times y over x plus y. But from here, we actually know that x plus y is equal to 100, where the total abundance is 100. So then now here, y is actually equal to 100 minus x. So we could put it in this way for percentage abundance of 71 gallium. So now the calculation could be with only x as the unknown. So we have 69 times x plus 71 times 100 minus x over where the total abundance is 100. So with this calculation, we will find x equals to 65. So if x equals to 65, then 100 minus 65, y will be equals to 35. So these are the percentage abundance of isotopes of gallium. We could actually calculate relative atomic mass from mass spectrum. So this is a question from October November 2009 paper 11 question 1. Mass spectrum actually is the data from mass spectrometer where in the graph we could see y-axis is actually the relative abundance and for this mass spectrum it is in percentage so then the x-axis actually it's m over e so m over e is actually mass over charge so the particles that we have in the syllabus is actually all in plus one the charge for it so therefore in this case M over E is actually equals to mass number. So with the x-axis mass number and also y-axis for the relative abundance, we could calculate the relative atomic mass of x. So we have 90 times 50 plus 91 times 10 plus 92 times 20 plus 94 times 20 over the total abundance and we will get the relative atomic mass of x equals to 91.30 and the answer is b Besides percentage, we could have relative abundance in ratio, where here we have 10 times 1 plus 11 times 4 over the total relative abundance, which is 1 plus 4 
with this calculation, we would get the relative atomic mass of the element with 10.8. So, and the answer is C. This question is from May, June 2007. Paper 1, question 1. That's all for calculation of relative atomic mass. Let's move into the mole. One mole of any particles is actually the amount of substance which contain the same number of particles as they in 12 grams of carbon-12. Where in 12 grams of carbon-12, we would have 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 carbon atoms. 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23, this number we would call it as Avogadro constant or Avogadro number. So we are able to get this number in data booklet first page. So any particle, they have the same number of mole, they will have the same number of particles in it. So for example here, if we have one mole of carbon dioxide molecules, we would have 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 carbon dioxide molecules. So same thing goes to sodium ions. So one mole of sodium ions, that is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 sodium ions. So with this, we were able to get number of particles equals to number of mole of the particles times 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. For example, to determine the number of particles in this mole of copper, so we could make use of 0 0.2016 mole times 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. So the number of carbon atoms in this mole will be 1.21 times 10 to the power of 23. So that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. That's all for today's video. If you are interested in more genuine sharing by other geniuses, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell, ding dong. Also, if you're struggling with one or two past your questions and the March scheme just doesn't seem to help, Genius got you covered. Feel free to let us know what question it is by filling in the Google form linked in the description below. Genius Hub will get genius teachers to fulfill your request for the solution. Genie, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.